Hey guys, welcome back to the part 2 of the Soldier F tutorial and in today's video, let's see how we can take the smoke scene that we did in the previous lesson and implement that to create a nicely magical particle simulation and so basically this is the setup that I did uh, to create the particle simulation and it includes three main uh, streams so um, as a so I think at this stage, I think we should take a look at the reference to analyze which layer we should have for our effect Alright, so this is a rap that I found from a movie named Alchemy of Souls and uh, in this video, you can see a really nice trail effect from his sword and uh, obviously, I will include this link in the description of this video so you guys can have a look later on so um, let me skip to a frame and uh, maybe capture to analyze it uh, maybe this one Alright, so uh, from my perspective, uh, this effect in, uh, involves two main layers and just so you know, the techniques of creating multiple layers for particle simulation is mainly how you can mess around with the noise and to illustrate that, there is the first layer that I can see from the ref, uh, which is the main one and um, and to create this, I, I tend to do a noise with a really high frequency, high amplitude and less attenuation and the second layer that I can see is that uh, some uh, is is a detail layers, and you can see some uh, stringy particle that goes along the trail, and um, this really makes the effect looks more interesting. And for this layer, I usually create uh, you know some small area of noise, you know that stay consistently throughout uh, throughout the animation. And in my setup, I did include uh, an extra layer of embers uh, to feel it more magical, but uh, yeah, it's totally up to you. Back in Sanghunini, the three main streams represent three layers of effects that I mentioned before, and I would say that the setup of creating each of them is pretty much the same, but I came up with uh, some uh, ways of uh, using the noise to make it different from one another. So let's have a look at them one by one. So for the first layer, I imported the also modified and I scattered around 600 k points onto the surface of the sword and I declare an ID attribute uh, which is uh, equal to BTNAM. I also store the initial position of each particle using the red sort and I said in the previous lesson, uh, this node is really important as it will help you to attack some noises to, uh, to the source and um, next, uh, this trail, this trail swap is used to compute the velocity and um, I drop down an attribute swap to calculate some uh, noises that go over the particle and we will use the noise to create some uh, create more interesting source for the particles and inside this, I mix up uh, three different noise to uh, really break up the source but the, mainly, but the main one is still the turbulent noise which I expose all of the parameters outside for easier control and um, after that, I, delete, I deleted all of the uh, points that have the uh, CD value less than uh, 0 0.05 uh, and um, and yeah, I uh, use an attribute uh, an attribute blur to uh, make the particle become more stringy. And um, finally, I connected uh, I connected it to the uh, first input, the popnet, and the second input should be the uh, smoke seam. Okay, so let's dive inside the popnet. And uh, for the pop source, uh, in the source tab. Uh, I use the, um, the emission time as on points because I already scatter points outside the soft level and the geometry source should be the first contact geometry which is true for the first input we plug it right here and in the first tab I use the since I want the effect to be finished uh, before frame 64, I set an, an expression dollar frame less than 64 and for the life expectancy, I set it to 0.3 and the life variance should be uh, half of it by taking this one and divide it by 2 and same as the smoke seam, we want, the, uh, we want to get rid of the uh, interrupted sourcing and we also want to fill all of the gaps in between frames and luckily the pop sort provides us a really convenient option to solve that by using these three modes but it requires a V attribute so it's uh, so, that, so that is why I set it right here 
But the drawback of using this mode is that it will introduce you some particles that have negative edge value. But I will show you how to fix that later. And you can check out uh, what side fix particle stepping video. And he explained really clearly, really clearly about uh, this uh, this mode. Uh, so make sure to check him out. And uh, in the attributes tab, I set the inherit v to zero because um. I want the smoke seam to be completely take place. And uh, next, I run a pop avex by volume. I set uh, the v, v source to second contact geometry, which is uh, to um, uh, which is this input right here. And um, the efficient type to be uh, update position, final v and trace. Uh, and this means that the particles will move exactly in the same way as our smoke move, which is what we want. And last but not least, I increase the uh, mass subset uh, in the pop solver to two, and that is how I do the particle seam for the first layer. All right, so this is the result of our particle simulation so far. And after catching the particles, I have series of nodes to edit post simulation and prepare the particle ready to be rendered. So first thing first, let's stop the negative x value. So if I were to select this file catch and only filter the x attribute, you can see some particles that have minus value. And there are two ways of fixing it. Um, the first and the straightforward way is to see the lowest value in the spreadsheet and fit it to a positive range. And um, I will show you another way in the uh, layer 2 setup. But um, you know, it's a bit complex but uh, more procedural. As the particles look a bit uniform when it's first spawned, I decided to use an attribute vault to noise it up a bit. And inside this, I just simply take the terminal noise and add it with the original P and plug it straight right into the P output. And I also limited the the, amp the amplitude of, uh, of the noise by filtering it via RAM. And um, as I want to as I want the noise to only happen uh, for the first half of the trail. And to make the most simpler to work properly, I use a trail here to recalculate the velocity after seam. And uh, after that, I set up a p scale attribute by using this rango. And uh, firstly, I uh, declare a uh, variable called norm h, which is uh, equal to h uh, divided by life. And uh, secondly, I declare another uh, variable called rand. And um, I take the id attribute and random it from 0 to 1 and fit it from 3 to 0 0.25 to 1 and I, I multiply the norm edge and ran together and also multiply it with a channel called uh, moon and, uh, this, this, and this will play as our uh, overall multiplier and last but not least I set up a motion vector pass uh, which is later used in COM Alright so let's take a look at the layer 2 and I would say that all of the nodes that I select right here is pretty much the same as the layer 1 and the only difference is how I handle the noise. And for the emission, I, I increase the attenuation to 1.2 to really show the contrast between the dark and white area. I also get rid of the animation on the z-axis, which I set to uh, dollar frame multiplied by 6 for the first layer. And I deleted all of the dark uh, area, uh, set it to black color, and set up another noise. And for this one, I increase the the attenuation to uh, 4 by 3 uh, to only uh, select uh, a handful of white area and um, once again I use a blast node to uh, remove all of the dark area this combination of nodes is used to avoid straight line during the simulation and let me open paint to illustrate this okay so uh, for example we have this blade uh, on the frame 1 and on the frame 2 it will move like that Okay, so uh, let's uh, scatter one, only one point on the blade, for example. Alright, so since we are using the velocity to interblade between frames, when this particle reaches to this one, uh, it will find the uh, position of this uh, previous particle to draw a uh, vector to that. And, uh, and as a result, it will uh, result in a straight line, which is, which is what we don't want. Uh, and instead of that, I set a curve uh, from this point to this point and uh, calculate the tangent from the curve and uh, for each point of this curve uh, I set the velocity to equal to this tangent 
and it will result in a curvy line rather than uh, this straight line. So let's see how we can do that in Houdini. In order to create a curve, we need to increase the trail length to at least 3 in the uh, trail soft and now uh, I connect them together using this as soft and in the polygon tab by groups, I set the parameter to by attribute and the attribute name is btid and um, next I run a resample to uh, increase the resolution of this curve and uh, I set the length to uh, 0 0.005 and instead of this uh, straight edge I alter this to interpolation curves which result in a much smoother result and finally I set the tangent attribute to V alright so for this stream right here I just take uh, I just simply take the uh, the, the density field and convert it to the gradient field to play as our gradient affection. So for more in depth information, please check out the Vossi volume gradient affection tutorial. And um, yeah, so to make sure to check it out. So let's dive inside this popnet. And for the pop source, I just order the light efficiency by lowering it to 0.15. I also decrease the V scale to 0.4 for the first pop effect by volumes. Uh, and I create another one, set the field name to gradient and give uh, the V scale a real low number like uh, 0 0.000 and 5 and so basically what this uh, pop effect volume by volumes done is to make the particles become more stringy and let's go up so this is the uh, result of our particle seam for the layer 2 and uh, this is uh, the other way to fix the negative edge issue uh, so first of all I use an attribute promote to create a brand new uh, uh, attribute called uh, edge match by promoting the maximum uh, edge value from point detail by using the promoter methods as maximum and uh, similarly to this one uh, I just take the minimum edge value and promote that to detail and once we have two values that we need we need to we might need to uh, promote it back from detail to point and import them as the source mean and the source mass uh, for the fixed range and by this way this fixed range always take the min and mass value as the input uh, regardless how you alter the, the life expectancy right here uh, so you don't have to open the spare sheet and you know check the value by yourself and um, for the other nodes you know it's pretty much the same as the layer one so you just need to copy and paste it right here Alright, so let's take a look at the layer 3, which is the amber one. So I also imported the soap modified and scattered around 8000 points onto the surface of it. And for this emission, I just simply uh, took the emission that I did for the layer 2 and paste it right here. But I added an expression dollar fame uh, times 2 for the Z offset. And inside this popnet, I just uh, shift the, the emission time from Apple post to Apple V and set the V plan to 0.8. The emphasis method is traced. And to, ver to vary up the uh, shape of each amber, I use a grid and factor it into five pieces and um, noise this up. Uh, put each of them to the center. Normalize the scale so all of them have the same scale. And right over here, I just set a uh, P scale attribute and randomize it um, by multiplying it. Uh, by uh, from 0.25 to 1 and set the global scale to 0.8 and also uh, use another randomize uh, sorry the attribute randomize to randomize the orient for each amber and finally I just um, uh, take uh, each uh, each grid and uh, copy them to the uh, particles using the copy stamp soft and that's how I did uh, the the embers for the layer 3 you know it's kind of hard to see in the viewport but um, it will be really, really noticeable in the render. And for the material of our particle, uh, I create a uh, material shader builder for that, and then name this to Mat Particles. We sort for material material particles, and inside this, uh, I just simply take the CD attribute uh, from our particle and plug it right into the surface color. And for the uh, surface opacity, I set it to a constant uh, as 0.25. And I also plug the surface alpha from the surface globals to the to the AF in the surface output. And as we want to um, uh, create a uh, motion vector path for our particle, uh, we need to import uh, the effect uh, the effect motion vector that we created before in the sub level. 
uh, and export it via a by export and make sure to uh, uh, and don't forget to add an extra image plan and um, set the and set the same name as we uh, uh, set it right here and uh, the face time is a uh, fixed type. Hello guys, welcome back. So this is the renders for each layer. This is layer one, layer two, layer three, and the final result after couple sighting. And then I will include this uh, noob script in my Gumball page so you guys can explore it by yourself. Let's say I did make a tutorial that uh, describe my FX lab from workflow. So if you are interested in it, uh, please have a look. And I think this is pretty much for our tutorial today. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below and I will answer them one by one. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more Houdini contents and tutorials in the future. And that is what I will see you in the next video. Bye.